the Pirates who have had the problem scoring runs, but they hope that one of their hot hitters at the plate right now, Kevin Young, can do the job. Tony Womack, along with Young and John Lieber, have been hot lately. Pirate, the Pirates have been winning lately because they've been getting much better pitching, and they've got some hitters that are hot. And, of course, Womack is key to that because he can get on base and he can make a lot of things happen when he gets on base. Count remains a ball and two strikes. The Braves, of course, with the top earn run average in the National League and the Pirates not that far behind. Uh, yeah, I think when you talk about ERA in the National League, you put, a, you put Atlanta on top, and it's a battle for second. I mean, the Atlanta pitching staff. I mean, Atlanta builds their team around their pitching staff, and they fill in the holes with what they can find, but the pitching is the most important thing. One-two pitch is fouled off the screen. Well, if you have any questions about uh, tonight's game, here's how you can get it to us on Interactive Fan. Email your baseball questions to MCI at Fox Sports Net. So make the questions easy if I have to answer. And <laughs> ditto for me. Pitch is inside. Ball gets away. Here goes Kendall going to the third. He's in there. I don't think Javi Lopez thought that Kendall was going to break for third. What? Sort of a decoy move. In a situation like that, you don't take third base unless you're absolutely positive you can make it. You never make the first or the third out at third base because you're going to score on second on a base hit. Let's see where the ball goes. I mean, it's just a breaking ball off the glove, and a lot of people aren't going to go to third, but Kendall is an aggressive base runner. He will run on you. Kendall and has 13 stolen bases. And this is what the Pirates are trying to build, an aggressive team with speed starting at the top of the lineup with uh, Tony Womack. Kendall, despite the fact that he's a catcher, batting second, how many times a catcher has been hitting that high in a lineup. It was a wild pitch that allowed Kendall to get to third base. And uh, Young gets jammed, got a piece of it, and the count is still two and two. Well, you talked about the tremendous starting pitching of the Atlanta Braves. And it begins with uh, Greg Maddox and Tom Glavitt. Who was this guy Mill with his ERAs for? I mean, they had to get rid of this guy, don't they? I mean, this is an outstanding staff, and no disrespect intended to Millwood. Rounder hit sharply to Guillen at shortstop, and that'll retire the side. So the Pirates leave a runner at second, and after one here at Three River Stadium, no score between the Braves and the Pirates. who hit his 33rd home run last night, now sixth in the National League, and having a tremendous season. Looking at those numbers, he is sixth in runs batted in, or fifth in RBI. Calaraga with uh, Chipper Jones before him, a tremendous one-two punch. This is not a team made up of speed, but with the starting pitching they have, they've got the power. You know, this is an old Baltimore Oriole team, a team built on pitching and three-run home runs. That's the Earl Weaver yes, School of is. Baseball team. First pitch ground ball to the left side. Collier guns out Galarraga, and there's one gone here in the second inning. And I think one of the reasons that the Braves went out and got Galarraga, you know, Fred McGriff was playing first base. He was another left-handed hitter, and it breaks up their lineup a little bit. It gives them a switch hitter in Jones, a right-hander, then Klesko a left-hander, Lopez a right-hander. It's tough to a pitch to a team like that when they're going to come at you so many different ways as opposed to having McGriff in there, who was also a left-hander. Here is Ryan Klesko, who is uh, hitting 277, has knocked in 51 runs, and uh, that pitch is down low for a ball. Klesko did not play last night. He has struggled as of late. Coming back after having his appendix uh, removed in arthroscopic fashion in late June. Tough to have an operation like that, I think, during the season. He missed about two weeks, which I think is darn good. But he's got some pop as a hitter. 2-0 pitch hit sharply to center field. Martinez going back, looking up, and it's gone. Home run for Ryan Klesko. And that shot out of here in a hurry. Number 15 for Ryan Klesko and the Braves take a 1-0 lead. Braves are a team that can hurt you with the home run. That's the 13th home run given up by Cordova, about one every 10 innings. And a 13th career home run against the Pirates. So Cordova giving up the home run to Ryan Klesko, and that brings up Javi Lopez. 
Lopez hitting 294. He's having a fine offensive year to go along with his great glove work. Take a look at the swing here and look at where the pitch is. Pitch is right over the middle of the plate about down. Most left-handed hitters, of course, like that down pitch. This is just a line drive over the fence. I thought it was going to go off the fence, and that's how strong he is. One ball and one strike to count to Javi Lopez. So the Braves who are on a pace to hit over 220 homers this year. That was their 141st of the year. Their franchise record was 207. Set about uh, 30 years ago. So the Atlanta Braves are uh, unquestionably a power team. And there's nothing like a three-run homer. That was a solo job, but a nothing like a three-run homer to solve a lot of your problems. Now, a three-run home run is a pitcher's best friend. One-run home run is not going to hurt the opposing pitcher unless you get shut out. You know, one-run innings don't normally hurt you. Lopez swings and misses. Foul tip held onto by Kendall and strikes out. That is the first strikeout for Cordova and two away here in the Braves second. Got him with the high heat right here. Already in the ball game, we have seen Francisco Cordova drop down sidearm a couple of times, especially against the right-handed hitters. We told you before the ball game, he's going to come at you with different angles, which means the spin's going to be different on his breaking ball. On the outside corner, strike one to Michael Tucker, the right fielder for the Braves. Tucker uh, suffered a sprained uh, ankle on Thursday, scratched from the lineup, came up to pinch it anyway, and uh, struck out in the game. Appealing to the third base umpire, and that's Terry Tata who signals a call strike. Paul Newert, who has uh, been called up from AAA, and uh, the National League will call up as the American League will umpires during uh, the summer months. Newert behind the plate, Wally Bell at first, Jerry Davis at second, and Terry Tata, the crew chief, at third. No balls and two strikes. Tucker with a line drive, base hit to right field. Two out single. So the two hits for the Braves have been hard hit. The homer by Klesko and now Tucker. So the number eight hitter coming up, Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones uh, suffering an embarrassing moment uh, on. Tuesday when he was uh, taken out of the game after loafing on a ball hit to the outfield by Lance Johnson and uh, Bobby Cox so upset with him that he replaced Andrew Jones and then decided he wasn't going to say much and after the game uh, kind of exploded again. He got on him pretty good and it's not too often you see Bobby Cox get on one of his players. Most managers go out of the way to protect their players. If a guy gets hammered oh he just had a bad game he'll be all right the next time. And there's a base hit to left field. Coming on in is Mark Smith, holding at second base is Tucker. So Andrew Jones with a single, and the Braves with two outs of runners at first and second. But you're right about uh, the Andrew Jones story, and I think what bothered Bobby Cox more than anything else is that he feels that people should have respect for the game. He said Willie Mays wouldn't have done a thing like this, neither would Hank Aaron. So you've got to hustle at all times, and maybe Andrew Jones learned a lesson. Well, the quotes in the paper said, go home or play. And to play the game of baseball really is pretty easy. You run hard to first, you run to your position, you try on the field. Doesn't sound too hard. And here's a guy in first base, Jones, that has a tremendous amount of ability. And some people think the game has come too easy for him at this stage of his career. And, yeah. what, and, what, and what he really needs, he needs to be pushed. And I think Bobby Cox has fined him enough where he finally did what he had to do. He took him out in the middle of an inning, and he made a, he made a point of really punishing him. And the question is, is the young man going to respond? And you could do this on a club like the Braves that has a lot of veteran leadership. And uh, Greg Maddox says, hopefully, you know, Andrew Jones will learn something from this. So uh, you know that there's not going to be any uh, further fires as a result of this. Denny Nagel, the hitter, and uh, the count to Nagel. One ball and one strike. Nagel, 8 for 47, hitting 170 on the year. Does have a run batted in. The infield and outfield plays uh, Nagel as a right-handed pull hitter. Two outs, two on for the Braves. They lead 1-0 on Ryan Klesko's home run here in the second. Swing and a miss on the breaking pitch. Foul tipped, actually, in the count, 1-2. and two. Yeah, the old rule of thumb in baseball is if you've got the opposing pitcher up, three breaking balls, and I'll see you later. And that was a breaking ball, and he did not have a good cut at it. Francisco Cordova trying to get out of this uh, second inning with only one run against him.
Pleasant night in Pittsburgh. Not very humid. Overcast as we start the night. As we said, a good crowd on hand. Ground ball right side. Gloved by Kevin Young. He'll make the play to retire the side. And the Braves lead two. But it was Ryan Klesko who put the Atlanta Braves to a pitch. Hit sharply to center field. Run. Martinez going back, looking up. And it's gone. Home run for Ryan Klesko. And that shot out of here in a hurry. Four cars killed him out the door. Game that was played here at Three Rivers Stadium. Well, that's a tough one. Well, I'll tell you what. Give it some thought, and I'm going to do the same. And uh, I hopefully our audience will do the same, yeah. and maybe they can come up with the right. Maybe answer. they can fax us the answer because that's a tough one. Boy, uh, oh boy. You know, I have record books here, but I, they're so thick and big, I don't have time to go through it. By the time we get the answer, they don't go so. back to seven. No. That's a long time ago. Boy, I tell you. Whoever it is has got to be ancient, I'll tell you oh, that. Oh, very old. <laughs> Jose Guillen leading off for the Pirates, the right fielder, and he takes ball one. Guillen in his second season with the Buccos was on the all-rookie team last year with 14 homers and 70 runs batted in. He was second behind Kevin Young in the power department. Fouls the pitch out of play, and it's one and one. Yeah, here's a guy that the Pirates have to show some patience with. He's got a great ability. He's got a great arm in right field. He was the most valuable player in the Carolina League two years ago. He went right from there to the major leagues. And I think when you bring a kid up that fast, you've got to give him patience and just let him grow into the job and hope he's a he's a hard player and, and he's going to just learn. Fly ball deep to right field. Michael Tucker back, jumps, makes the catch. A fine leaping catch by Michael Tucker, who had that timed all the way. And Guillen is robbed of extra bases on Tucker's fine defensive play. I think the key to that catch was he timed it perfectly. I mean, Tucker is an outstanding outfielder. He's had an ankle problem. Look how he goes with the pitch, though. He tries to pull that pitch. That's an easy out, but he almost got this one out of the ballpark. And that is a nice catch by Tucker. Well, the Braves, we talked about everything that they have. You didn't talk about the bullpen. That has been the one area, the closing spot, which has been a puzzle to them. Still trying to solve it. Manny Martinez fouls off a fastball. And one strike. The Pirate center fielder hitting 289. You know, the Atlanta Braves bullpen, you know, has been good, has been bad. They've got great starters. Their starters generally will give them a lot of good, solid innings. And they've got people in the bullpen that can throw hard. But right now, they don't have a true, quote unquote, closer. They've got somebody who's done a good job out there in Leitenberg. And of course, they've got Wohlers, who right now has a big question mark surrounding his future. But well, one thing the Braves do have is they have qu five quality starters and they will not need all of those guys in the playoffs. Pop foul and out of play. Mark Wohlers, of course, who uh, went down to uh, Richmond, the AAA Farm Club, struggled there, and since he's come back, still hasn't found it. But I think that if you look at the big picture, with all of the great things that the Atlanta Braves has, looking at the Yankees in the National American League, that without that closer, they would have a tough time, as if anyone wouldn't against the New York Yankees. I think a closer is probably outside your starting pitching. It's the second most important thing you can have going into the playoffs. You've got to have somebody that the team have team has confidence in to come in and close out a ball game and get you a win. One ball two strikes Martinez with a deep drive to left big it out and it's gone. Home run for Manny Martinez and that'll tie the game at 1 1. That's number four for the Pirate center fielder. And the Pirates have tied it up. That is the 20th home run off of Denny Nagel, who has uh, given up a lot of home runs. He is eighth in the National League for the most home runs given up, and he has given up a deep one there to Martinez to tie it up. This is the fastball. It's in off the plate. Notice where the catcher was set up. He got the ball over the plate more so than Javi Lopez wanted him to. He took it out. Keith Osick, the third baseman, with a foul ball and a strike. Sometimes when you know you've made a mistake, that's the, that's the response. And there was no question about that one. 0 and 1 to Osik. Fly ball to center field. Andrew Jones will camp under it. And that'll be out number two. All right, let's uh well I really 
been really thinking about this answer to our B.F. Goodrich trivia question. Was Who was the winning pitcher in the All-Star game in 1974? Was it Bob Lemon? <laughs> it was a guy who probably could have played with Bob Lemon. Well, the answer is uh, my partner tonight, uh, Ken Brett. Yeah, I knew the answer to that one. I know you did. And uh, and if you didn't know the answer to that, <laughs> then I'd really be in right. trouble. <laughs> well, that's a great honor uh, to be a winning pitcher at an All-Star game, especially in the ballpark with the team you're playing with. The, with you know, the, the, the funny thing about that All-Star game was the Pirates at the All-Star game that year in 74 were not playing very well, and I was the only one that made the team. Maybe it's because they had to pick somebody from the Pirates, and we had a great team. We got into a fight right around that time, and we came on like gangbusters and won the division in the second half. It was a strong baseball team. Luke Collier, the number eight hitter, the Pirate shortstop, takes down low, ball one, one and one. Pirates hitting the ball hard against Denny Nagel here in the second inning. Good breaking pitch, and uh, Collier just got a piece of that one. Uh, Guillen with a uh, deep drive to right, handled well by Michael Tucker, and then Martinez with a long home run to left field. So Nagel, as we pointed out, his 20th home run of the season. And he's uh, one of the top gopher ball pitchers in the National League at this point. Here's the 1 2. And the Pirates are chasing that outside pitch so far in this And game. that's what he likes you to do. He likes you to chase that outside pitch. And then he'll throw you that change up of his, which is a circle change, which almost acts like a screwball. It's going to go down and away from the right-handed hitter. Or else if he wants to try and strike you out, he'll do what he did earlier in the ball game to Mark Smith. Fastball in. Here's the one-two pitch. Strikes him out, and that was the straight change outside the strike zone. So the second strikeout for Denny Nagel. But... The big home run by Manny Martinez ties it up, and after two innings here in Pittsburgh, we're all even in one run. Stockton and Ken Brett. And a home run by Ryan Klesko in the top of the second, matched by Manny Martinez homer in the bottom of the second inning. Ozzy Guillen on the first pitch. Sharp ground ball to Luke Collier, the shortstop, and quickly one away in the Braves' third. Again, twice has uh, grounded out to shortstop. You talked to Ozzy before the ball game. He wants one thing. He's in Atlanta for one thing. He wants that ring. Play for free, he said. Give me the ring. That's all he wants now. Signed by the Braves early in May as a free agent after the Orioles waived him. He struggled in his uh, time in Baltimore. And Tony Graffinino takes a strike on the inside edge. 0 1 to him. Graffinino fly to left his first time. The Atlanta Braves now 33 games over 500 for the first time this year. And a strike on the outside corner. So Cordova, despite giving up that home run to Klesko, has looked awfully poised thus far. Yeah, we said before the ball game, lots of angles. That last pitch was sidearm, outside corner. He's got good control, walks about two per ball game. This guy knows how to pitch. And you don't know where that pitch is going to be coming from. There's a fastball. Uh, Misses high, I would think, in the count one and two. That was close. Now, do you think he might try to sneak one by inside? Get that hitter just leaning a little bit. Strikes him out on a slider. And the second strikeout for Cordova. Let's take a look at the del delivery here from Francisco Cordova. That was about high three quarters. Notice from high three quarters, and then from sidearm, he'll come all the way down toward third base. Here's Chipper Jones, and that's now low for a ball. Cordova retired the side in order in the first inning, and he's gotten Guillen and Graffinino here in the third, and Jones who fly to left field. And again down low, two balls and no strikes to Chipper Jones. Jones, a switch hitter, hitting 327. As a left-handed batter, all but one of his home runs have come from the left side of the plate. He has 26 on the year, 25 as a left-handed hitter. He has got predominantly more power from this side than as a right-handed hitter. This is where he's got his pop. That breaks inside, and it's 3-0 now to Jones. 
Now let's see what the pitcher does in this situation. He knows that Chipper Jones has power. It's three, you know, he's got two outs, nobody on. I mean, I don't think he's gonna groove one here. He's gonna make a pitcher's pitch or he's gonna walk him. It's as simple as that. You got Galarraga waiting on deck. That pitch is in for a ball strike. Jones, what is on his way to first base. He thought it was ball four. Well, was it high enough? There's the glove, a little low. That's the old 3-0 strike. There's the 3-1, and he walks in. So the two-out walk, and that'll bring up uh, Galarraga. That's the first walk of the game. Well, next week on Baseball Thursday, Juan Gonzalez brings his awesome numbers into the Sky Dome to meet the Blue Jays. Or Jim Tomey and the Tribe close in on a central title as Junior takes aim at the game's most hallowed record. Check local listings for the game in your area. Two down in a 1-1 game. Andres Galarraga grounded to short his first time up. Infield plays Galarraga to pull the outfield uh, just slightly around to the left. First pitch is a breaking ball low and away. Ball one. Still has power, you know. Don't say what you will about him being in Colorado. He still has great power. He's very patient. He likes to work the pitchers to get counts where he's ahead and they have to come to him. And he's got power from foul line to foul line. Two down, the runner at first base, and back to the mound, and Cordova will retire Galarraga, and that'll do it. The Braves lead one. And in the middle of the third inning here at Three River Stadium, 1-1 between Atlanta and Pittsburgh. And welcome back to FX Baseball Saturday night here in Pittsburgh. And amongst the statues outside of Three River Stadium, that of Honus Wagner, one of the all-time greats to don a Pittsburgh Pirate uniform. And there were many. Francisco Cordova, the pirate pitcher, taking ball one from Denny Nagel here in the bottom of the third inning. 1-1 one, one the score. Slaps it out of play to the opposite field, and it's 0-1-1. One one. Cordova, 5 for 46, hitting 109. He's got a very interesting... Uh, <laughs> What's he attack? whacking at up there? Whacking up I there. I think Cordova might have invented the tomahawk <laughs> shot. Uh, Denny, don't throw him the hook here. <laughs> I don't want to see the hook hack. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. And the ground ball slowly hit to shortstop. Gibb will toss it over to retired Cordova. One away here in the Pirate third inning, and that will bring up the top of the order, Tony Womack. Denny Nagel, the former Pirate, last year the only 20-game winner in the National League, finished third in the Cy Young balloting, coming over to the Braves with an impressive year. Ten and eight this year, but uh, struggling in his last start, and the first pitch to Womack is down low. It's hard to believe you could say that. Struggled in his last start, because it doesn't happen very often with the Atlanta starting pitching. There's a base hit, sharply hit to right field. Tucker chasing it, and Womack with good speed, and Tucker holds him to a single. Michael Tucker getting over there in a hurry, and I would say that nine times out of ten, you'd find Womack going to second and making it successful. I'm sure when that ball was hit, Womack was thinking he's going to take second, but Tucker in right field's got very good speed. I mean, this ball is hard hit into right field. He gets over there in a hurry, stops, and just quickly fires into second. That's one of the subtle... Games within a game we have tonight here when Womack with a good speed and then Tucker the outfield with good speed as well. So here's Jason Kendall with a runner at first and one out and the first pitch ball gets away from Javi Lopez and Womack will advance to second base. Well, that, that ball looked very, very catchable. That might be a pass ball charge to Lopez. We'll see. Obviously, he wasn't crossed up. A pass ball is charged to uh, Lopez, and Womack is at second base. Womack with 39 stolen bases, leading the National League. 39 thefts in 44 attempts. Jason Kendall takes up high ball one. 
Let's take another look at this pass ball here from the catcher. Now watch how he tries to catch the ball right there. He's got to have his palm up, not his palm down. 2-0 to Kendall. And it's 3-0 now to Jason Kendall, who doubled his first time up to the opposite field. And the Pirates trying to take the lead here in the bottom of the third inning. Tomorrow, by the way, will be the last game of the season in the series between the Pirates and the Braves. Braves, of course, having won six of the first seven. There's a fastball for a strike, three and one. Of course, a base on balls here, not out of the question for Nagel. He's got a double play in order if he does get the base on balls, and Kendall is a dangerous hitter. Mark Smith on deck for the Buckos. Here's a 3-1 pitch to Kendall, and a line shot base hit, and the run is going to score in the gap and going all the way to the wall. Kendall on his way to second with his second double of the game, and the Pirates have taken a two-to-one lead. This looked like a pretty good pitch here. Look at it, up, out, over the plate. I'm a little surprised he made that pitch. I'm sure it was just a mistake because I'd rather, if I'm the pitcher, have a double play in order with somebody like Mark Smith up at the plate than have Kendall, who's a 331 hitter, going to hit you for the second double of the ball game. That's been one of the problems. Nagel has been getting his pitches up, and it cost him there. Here's Mark Smith taking down low ball one. So Kendall with a pair of doubles, and now with his 46th run batted into the year, and the Pirates leading 2-1. to one. Kendall now hitting 335. Those are the current batting averages. Second to Dante Bichette in the National League. And the crowd enthused tonight. Pirates battling the Braves early on here. Swing and a miss out in front of that off-speed pitch. And the count is one and one to Mark Smith. One of the things you've always got to do, Dick, when you're a starting pitcher, you got to know who's up next, and you got to know who's up after him. Because if you got an open base, you got to be smart. And believe me, Nagel is a very smart pitcher. He just made a mistake right there. Well, there are Pitchers make mistakes all the time. That one hurt him. True, but there are many players on the Pirates who you want to let beat you, and he's one of those players you don't want to beat you. Absolutely. One ball and one strike, setting on the outside part of the plate. Sliced to right field. Tucker coming on over in foul territory and cannot hold on. And Michael Tucker shaken up. It is a foul ball, and Michael Tucker shake it up, trying to make a very difficult catch right on the fence in front of the Pirate bullpen. It looks like his right hand is what's hurt. Tucker, of course, has been hoping that uh, his uh, playing days in Atlanta remain, that he's not the object of a trade possibility, and there it is, and it oh, looks yeah. like his yeah. left wrist. Might have hit the pole. Left wrist hit the pole, and he had some pretty good body speed behind that. It's that left wrist area that's going to be bothering him. Bobby Cox is going to go all the way out to right field to see how Michael Tucker is. It was the left wrist. Look at the left wrist, right under the glove. Boom. And he very nearly uh, had the presence of mind to uh, hold on to that ball. This is very delicate here when they're checking the wrist and fingers. Hoping that there, uh, there isn't as, as serious an injury as a break there. Well, we're, I think what we're hoping for is the funny bone. You get the funny bone and you get that tingling sensation yes. in your fingers, that's going to go away in a minute or two. But if they're touching that, that, that area where he banged up against the wall, I think he's coming out of the ball game. And he looks like he's a whole lot better right now. Let's take one more look here. Stop, stop right there and look right here. Maybe it's that hand that got stuck in the fence. So maybe it wasn't the wrist that hit the wall. Maybe it was the other finger that got stuck in the fence. And those fences are tough. Those are the typical fences you see around all ballparks. Well, Michael Tucker apparently is going to stay in the game, and that's good news for Braves fans. Very nearly made uh, another outstanding catch. He robbed Guillen of extra bases in the second inning and 
trying to flex that uh, hand. So Denny Nagel going back to work with the count to uh, Mark Smith. There is the pitch total uh, so far for Denny Nagel. That's a lot of pitches at this time of the ball game. We are into the third inning, two and one third inning so far. One ball and two strikes to Mark Smith with one out. Kendall at second. Pirates taking a two to one lead and uh, a good pitch in on the fist jamming Smith foul back one and two. Remember the last time Smith was up that's the one he looked at for strike three this time he had a pretty good rip back. And the question you ask now is did he set him up for something back on the outside maybe that change up that goes down and away from the right hand. He's setting up on the outside part of the plate and he got that fair ball. No it's called foul by Terry Tata. From our vantage point it looked like it might have been fair but Tata right on top of the play immediately signaled a foul ball and he did not get the ball in the nearly the location that Avi Lopez had set up in. That pitch was outside and what would he try he tried to get way out in front of that and bend those wrists and pull that ball. That looked clo very close. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, the umpire in perfect position. He's in foul territory. It looked like it might have been fair, but Tata was about uh, four feet away from where that ball landed. I'll put my vote in Tata right there, not Absolutely. in Mark Smith. Yeah. Mark would love a base hit in that situation. Tata was in the right spot, however. But Nagel uh, missed on that pitch, and very fortunate that uh, Smith did not get an extra base hit. So we'll do it again. A ball and two strikes. Denny Nagel, the former Pittsburgh Pirate, who, by the way, uh, suffered the lone defeat against the Pirates this year in the one win by Pittsburgh against Atlanta. Here's the one-two pitch upcoming to Smith. And he came inside once again, did not go around, and the count two and two. Pirates and Braves of course played some classic series in the National League uh, pennant battles in the early 90s. Fastball away three and two. Denny Nagel was uh, acquired from the Pittsburgh Pirates for youth as the Pirates making those kinds of deals and still may be on the market to make those kinds of trades. Three balls and two strikes to Smith. Kendall the runner at second base. A run in here in the third. And the Pirates lead two to one. Slowly hit to second base. And Graffinino will make the play. And that will retire the side. But the Pirates take the lead. And after three. Or two out. Excuse me. My apologies. Cordova was the first out. And now Smith. Bob Prince used to do that. Well, and they always thought it was... It, but when he did it, he'd really leave. Right. <laughs> he'd just leave. And he used to say, no, 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 no. no. There are only two out. They told, me it, they told me it was two out. Well, no one told me it was two out. Uh, two, two out now. Kevin Young. Grounded to short his first time up. Kendall going to third on the ground out. Fly ball hit to right field. And Tucker. And this will be officially the third out of the inning. And after three here in Pittsburgh, Pirates with a run off of Denny Nagel to the fourth. Now you talk about a kid having some fun. Look at this. He's got the drink. He's got the drink here. He's got the hat. Dad's got something going. This is big league fun here, folks, in Pittsburgh. They got it all working. Including a blue glove. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's what baseball is. Kid comes to a Saturday night game to see the Atlanta Braves and having a good time. The refreshments. Got a good seat. Ryan Klesko with a fly ball hit to shallow left center field charging in and making the catch is Mark Smith after a fine run. Ryan Klesko who put the Braves in front with a home run is retired on a fine defensive play. Well FX baseball Saturday night continues next week. Mike Piazza hosts his former teammates as the National League wild card race heats up between the Dodgers and the Mets. Game starts at 7 p.m. Eastern 10 o'clock Pacific only on FX.
Well, we've seen some sparkling defensive plays thus far in this game, Ken, and Mark Smith making one right there, and that brings up Javi Lopez. And there's another one. Luke Collier to his left, makes the play, and a good scoop by Kevin Young at first base. Fine defensive play all the way around for the Pirates. You know, Javi Lopez does not run real well, and I think the shortstop Collier knew that. Collier, first of all, makes a good stop on the ground ball. The ground ball was well hit. Now he gets up. He's not rushing too fast here. Look at him. He gets set, makes the good throw, but it's a little off the line. But look at the first baseman, Young. Extending himself to his fullest. And uh, so we have seen some gems in the field. The first two outs here in the Braves' fourth inning brings up Michael Tucker. Tucker singled to right field his first time. Down low, a ball. Tucker hitting in the low 200s against the Pirates in his career. Facing Francisco Cordova. And the pitch again is down low, 2-0. Cordova has pitched well, has given up three hits, including the home run to Klesko, all coming in the second inning. And uh, can't get that ball uh, up in the strike zone and falls behind Michael Tucker. Three balls and no strike. Now here's a situation 3 and 0. I'd give this guy a little better pitch than I would have Chipper Jones 3 and 0. That's in there. I don't think I'm throwing that one to Chipper. I think I'm throwing Chipper a better pitch than that. Now it's 3 and 1 and he's going to go right after him again. Even though Joe, even though Tucker has 11 home runs, he is not nearly the home run threat that a Chipper Jones is. Out of play and the count is full. 3 and 2. And that's what's called pitching. Knowing when you can do things and knowing when you have to back off and sometimes pitch around guys. Only 26 years old, but uh, he has a lot of poise. No, he pitched in Mexico. He was 13 and 0 the year before the Pirates picked him up, and you know, he's done a good job for this. Ball four, and Tucker draws a two out walk. That's the second base on balls issued by Cordova. And that'll bring up Andrew Jones. Cordova in the second half of last year struggled pretty badly through 178, in, 178 innings, which is the most he had ever pitched. And I think he ran out of gas a little bit. Coming into the ball game tonight, he had 135, and I think they're going to watch him a little closely in the second half, but I think he's also going to be a little stronger this year as a result of what he went through last year. Tucker being held on by Kevin Young. Tucker with five stolen bases on the year. Pirates are in front, two to one. And they play a Jones to pull. Third baseman uh, Osik just a few steps off the line. Fly ball down the left field line. Mark Smith with the long run, and he makes the catch. Mark Smith has had to make uh, two long runs for catches, but the good one was robbing Ryan Klesko of a base hit to lead off the fourth. And in the middle of the fourth inning, the Pirates lead the Braves two to one. Pirate fan in the second row. Look at those young brave fans who have their face painted in the first row. They came prepared, Ken. Atlanta Braves, I think, have fans everywhere. I grew up in Southern California. A lot of Atlanta Braves fans. I think it's because of what do they call it? That station that the man owns, yeah. the team owns. Kind of super if you like to watch baseball from one team. Jose Guillen starting off the bottom of the fourth inning for the Pirates. Takes ball one. Guillen. Slide out to right field. Michael Tucker making a leaping catch at the wall. Benny Nagel falling behind now. Two balls and no strikes. There's a call strike two and one. You may say, well, how can you be struggling with a 10 and 8 record? with four complete games. Well, but, his ERA is about a, a run a run higher than it was last year. And it's not like he's struggling a lot. His ERA is still pretty darn good. But it's not quite as good as it was last year when he was outstanding. Last year, he was the number four starter on this club. You got Smoltz, Glavin, and a guy named Maddox ahead of you. And the number four starter wins 20 games. You mentioned Millwood has pitched well. Millwood is the guy they sit down. He is the extra man on that staff, and look how impressive he has been this year. He's the number five starter. Still had himself a pretty good year. 2-2 two -two pitch in the air, hit to center field. Andrew Jones way back, and on the warning track, makes the catch. 
Jones was playing Guy in shallow in center field, and all of the good center fielders can do that because they know that they can get back and get the, the four center fielders are the one that play deep. Now, you watched the pitcher a minute ago. He had his, he had his index finger circled with his thumb. He's having trouble with that changeup again. And Manny Martinez coming up last time up. There it went out of the park into the left field bleachers. And that for Martinez, his fourth home run of the year, tied the game at 1-1. And the Pirates have since gone ahead. One away, nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Off-speed pitch missing, 1-0 to Martinez. Getting the call in center field tonight. After a solid June, tailing off in July. But the count now is in his favor, 2-0. You know, a lot of people look at Denny Nagler. Here's a guy that won 20 games last year. He's going to win probably easily 15, 17 games this year. Fastball about 87 miles an hour. You do not have to be a hard thrower to win in the major leagues. But you better know how to pitch. He can pitch. Fastball back on the screen, 2-1. and one. Well, pitching is an art. And so many pitchers throughout baseball have proven it. Let's take a look at the National League Cy Young Awards. Pedro Martinez broke a four-year Atlanta Braves string, of which uh, Greg Maddox was king. Greg Maddox, probably the best pitcher in baseball. Another guy that does not throw real hard, but has even better control than Mr. Nagel. As a former pitcher, why don't more young pitchers realize that that is the route to go, not only uh, for intelligence and the art of pitching, but for longevity? Well, anytime you try to overthrow the ball, you're just going to, you know, you're going to get tired. And pretty soon the fastball that's 93, if you could throw 93, gets to 89, it becomes very hittable. And he went around, strike three, and Martinez goes down on strikes. That's number three for an angle. What is hard is to learn how to pitch. And to learn how to pitch, you've got to have a couple of pitches. You've got to be able to throw them over the plate pretty much any time you want. And you've got to be able to change speed. And to do all of those things is very difficult. Here's the check swing right here on Martinez. Tries to go around. Bat crosses the plate, strike three. Big breaking ball from Nagel. So Leo Mazzoni, the Braves pitching coach, uh, with his mantra in the uh, dugout, sitting next to Bobby Cox. Yeah, he's been in the minor league organization for a long time. He is an outstanding pitching coach. Keith Osick with the count, one ball and one strike. Aramis Ramirez, who is suspended, serving a five-game suspension. This is the second game of the five-game suspension. So Osik getting the call at third base, taking a call strike, one and two to him. Two outs, nobody on base for the Pirates here in the bottom of the fourth. They lead the Braves two to one. Gene Lamont was talking about Ramirez, and he said the reason he got five games was not because he went to the mound, but because when he went to the mound, he fired his helmet at the opposing pitcher. If you go to the mound, you're going to get a game or two. The big difference uh, compared to the American League is neither of the managers got suspended. You know, in the American League, Dr. Beauty, he likes to kick those managers out, too. But not in this league. But five games is a pretty good suspension, mainly because he threw the helmet. Lamont says, I don't mind if you go out, just don't throw the helmet. At short range, that uh, can be a tenuous situation. Osik popping up and handled by Chipper Jones. One, two, three inning. For the first time tonight by Denny Nagel, we go to the fifth here in Pittsburgh, but the Pirates leading by a run. Go to the fifth inning, and Gene Lamont playing with a short bench tonight. Aramis Ramirez suspended. Let's go back and show why he was suspended for five. So Jose Vazquez hits Aramis Ramirez right here. Ramirez, now watch the helmet. Fuck. just fires. I'll tell you what, Vazquez took a couple of shots there to the head. Gene Lamont told me he got banged up a little bit. But the whole incident did not start with that beating of Ramirez. It happened a little before that on a play at third base. And there's some words spoken, and that's why Vazquez hit Ramirez. Most of the time, it does go back to a previous uh, situation. Then he Nagel, the batter, chases uh, the pitch and misses. Oh, no balls and two strikes. Nagel rounded out to uh, first base. Kevin Young, his first time up. And I give Vasquez a lot of credit. He took his hat off and said, come on, baby, let's go. He stood his ground. <laughs> Whether it was a wise move or not is another question. One ball, two strikes to Denny Nagel here in the top of the fifth inning. Francisco Cordova 
looking for his ninth win of the year. And he's pitched well against the Atlanta Braves. Two and two now to uh, his opposite number. Well, I think anytime you have the eighth best ERA in the National League at 3.13, generally speaking, you're a pretty good pitcher. Chop foul into the Pirates dugout, so Nagel stays alive. Greg Maddox will pitch tomorrow's series finale, not only for this series, but for the season's activities between these two teams. And the count is full, so Cordova, after getting ahead two strikes on Nagel, now runs the string full to the Braves pitcher. On deck, the top of the order, Ozzie Guillen. Here's the 3-2 pitch, ball four. He went for the breaking pitch, and he walked Nagel, and that is the third walk given up by Cordoba, one in each of the last three innings. And right now, let's get you updated on scores from this afternoon. The Chicago Cubs trying to keep the New York Mets at bay, winning 3-2. 30th save at Wrigley Field. The Marlins hurt the Phillies' chances as they have a wild card dreams. The Padres and the Astros in a big one with San Diego winning that one 6-5. 37th home run for Greg Vaughn. The Reds over the Giants 9-8. And the uh, Rockies beat the Cardinals 5-2. And Mark McGuire still stuck on 43 home runs. Well, I guess we're going to have to start talking about Greg Vaughn pretty soon. He's got 37 big ones. And he's been sneaking up. And one of the things that Vaughn says is, hey, this is great. No one wants to talk to me because of the other guys. I'm just sneaking up on. This is the year of the home run. No question about it. Here is Guillen. Showed a bunt and uh, did not foul it off. And uh, Jason Kendall quickly smothered it. And it's ball one. And uh, Nagel holding it first base. Yeah, it's not too often you can see a pitcher in a situation like this be real aggressive on the base pass. Pitches low and in, pulls the bat back, and the ball gets by Kendall, but no advance. Osik playing a couple of steps in at third base. He in a slap hitter, as you can see by the left side of the pirate infield. A rare throw to first base to keep the pitcher close to the bat. Braves looking to tie the game, trailing two to one here in the top of the fifth inning. Fouled off the foot of Aguilar, and it's one and one. You know, Guillen started the season in Baltimore, and they got out of the gate ten and two, and they started losing a few ball games. And Ozzy said, "What's going on around here? It's just a couple of ball games." And he realized he wasn't really going to get an opportunity to play in Baltimore. And he went to Ray Miller and said, hey, Ray, why don't you release me? Let me go to another team. And Ray said, I can't do that. We're going to try to trade. He said, Ray, you don't understand. I may not take the trade. I may just go home. Two days later, they released him. He signed with Atlanta. So instead of going back home to Venezuela, he went to Atlanta. And he was 1 for 16 in 12 games with the uh, Baltimore Orioles as uh, Mark Smith uh, retrieves a, a balloon out in the outfield. Good crowd out here tonight. They expect more than 30,000. This would be the seventh crowd here at Three Rivers Stadium to exceed 30,000 if that's the total. Again, Cordova goes over to first base. Denny Nagel, the potential tying run, with nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Ian twice is grounded out to uh, Luke Collier at shortstop. Setting up outside, and there's the bunt, and it's fouled off. A lot of times in a situation like that, when you're asked to bunt, you're not asked to drag a bunt. As he tried to drag there, I think what Bobby Cox wants him to do, sacrifice bunt. Big difference. Sacrifice, you're trying to make the out of first base. You're not trying to get a base hit. Drag bunt, you're trying to get a base hit. I think Ozzy got a little greedy right there. If you want to sacrifice, you want to make sure you get it down. Get it down, get thrown out, put the runner in scoring position. Ian had other ideas, but the count now is a ball and two strikes. Low crouch stance by Ozzie Guillen. 
Here's the one two pitch. Foul ball down the right field line. Guillen, of course, uh, tutored by Walt Riniak uh, when Riniak was the batting instructor for the Chicago White Sox several years ago. You don't see a whole lot more hitting coaches like a Walt Riniak. I know Charlie Lau was a lot like a Walt Riniak, but Riniak, I think, took it a little further. And he had some guys in the White Sox organization taking some real funky swings. And, you know, Walt is no longer obviously the batting coach, and he had a lot to say in that of organization as far as the hitters were concerned. Here's the one-two pitch. Grounded base hit to right field, and Nagel will stop at second base. So credit Ozzie Guillen with hanging in there with two strikes, and Guillen with the fourth hit of the game for the Atlanta Braves, and they've got a threat going with runners at first and second. And nobody out. Let's check the American League scoreboard right now. The Indians are beating the Tigers with Mike Jackson picking up his 25th save today. The Mariners defeat the Orioles 4 to 2 and the Yankees losing to the White Sox. The Yankees suffering only their 26th loss of the year. Of course, they have a chance to have the all time winning percentage. But right now they seem to tail off, not as far as their lead, but as far as going out of sight win one hard to play like that 162 games here is Graffinino shows bunt and takes ball one now in this situation once again we're looking for the sacrifice bunt. best place to bunt right to the third baseman first baseman of course young is going to be charging Braves looking to sacrifice with uh, Chipper Jones and Galarago to follow Keith Osick uh, ready to charge from third Here's the 1 0 pitch offered at it and it's a ball outside. You know when you're a pitcher and you know the guy's going to bunt the best pitch to throw him was a fastball about letter high. You know on the last pitch was a slider low and outside. I don't understand that. Here's a guy trying to make it out. Let him give you the out. Don't try to be too cute out there. Let him give you a chance maybe to get the runner at third. It's a pitcher on second base who's not going to have real good speed. But if he's going to give you an out let's not let's not try to be too cute out there. Raffinino 0 for 2. Here's the 2 0 pitch and a one hopper. Collier over to second for one. Throw to first. Double play. And they did not rotate, and it's a good thing that the Pirates did not have their infield in motion because that might have gotten through for a base hit. And as a result, good call by Gene Lamont. A double play. Nagel winds up on third, but the Pirates get a big twin killing. Big twin killing. They took the butt away. Watch where the watch where the run. Here's the shortstop right here. Here's the second baseman right here. We're not talking about the shortstop going here to cover third. We're not talking about the third baseman coming here to make the play at the plate. Everybody plays in the right position, and this is an easy six to four to three double play. And that was a, a terrific move by the Pirates not to rotate on that situation. Now Chipper Jones, the batter, and of course the Pirates are not out of the woods with. Nagel at third and the dangerous Chipper Woods who is 0 for 1 with a walk his last time up. And the pitch is outside. So the count to Jones is 1 and 1. Two outs and Denny Nagel at third. Outfield straight away and a big cut by Jones and misses a ball and two strikes. We've got some action now in the Pirate bullpen. Left-hander Jeff Tabaka. Little unusual, I think, to see that in this situation. You know, Cordova's pitched a pretty good ball game. His team is leading two to one. Now the infield and outfield straight away with a count of ball and two strikes. And he goes around. Chipper Jones strikes out. And the Pirates get out of it. The Braves had runners at first and second. Nobody out and do not score. And in the middle of the fifth inning, getting the big strikeout, Chipper Jones fans and the Pirates hold on to their 2-1 to one lead. Copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Commissioner of Baseball. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted without written consent.
And back in Pittsburgh, along with Ken Breath, this is Dick Stockton, and the, uh, we've got a good one going. The Pirates leading the Braves 2-1. to one. Each side is a home run. Ryan Klesko for the Braves in the second, and uh, Manny Martinez tied it up in the bottom of the second, but we have seen several outstanding defensive plays, and the Pirates uh, showing the, the spirit and enthusiasm and a lot of the youth that they have, and of course, going for you, trading such people as Denny Nagel to the Atlanta Braves. Let's take a closer look, Ken, at that deal. Ron Wright, Corey Pater, and Jason Smith. Jason, of course, in the big leagues. Wright and Pointer in the minor leagues. Wright, a definite prospect. Hit 304 last year in AAA, seventh round draft pick. Painter struggling at the Class A level, not good numbers, lots of strikeouts. But I think anytime you trade three minor leaguers for a, for a bona fide major leaguer, and you get a chance to have two of those guys produce for you at the big league level, you've made a good trade. Lou Collier leading off for the Pirates here in the fifth inning from Denny Nagel takes a breaking ball inside. Collier struck out his first time up. Spent most of last season at the AAA and came up uh, for 18 games and hit 135 for the Pirates. He is uh, 24 years old, a native of Chicago. And he has made some sparkling plays at shortstop tonight. Fastball nicks the outside corner. Two and one. You know, you talk about the Pirates and a lot of players they have at the minor league level. They've got a shortstop named Abraham Nunez at AAA, who they say is going to be an outstanding shortstop in the big leagues maybe next year. A second baseman named Warren Morris at second base from LSU. They say he is going to be in the big leagues, and they're talking about maybe moving Womack to center field. So the Pirates have a lot of players at the minor league that they're going to have, have to find some room for real soon. And don't forget, they're going to move into a new ballpark in 2001. That could be pretty good. And the timing could be perfect, uh, a la the Cleveland Indians. Exactly. Where they had their new ballpark, and a lot of their superb young players were gelling at the same time. Collier lifts a pop-up foul territory, and it lands into the uh, seats. But uh, the timing so important. I remember... When the Pirates moved to Three River Stadium back in the early 70s, and they had already begun the influx of people like uh, Al Oliver and Richie Hebner, Manny Sangui, and Bob Robertson. And these these were guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. All came up from their minor same league time. system. Yeah, good all, young players. All played on the same Triple uh, A team at that time. Columbus. Dave Cash was another one, and and the Pirates seemed to gel, and that was the beginning of uh, what turned out. They had, of course, Willie Stargell, and a lot of these standbys had already been there. Swing and a miss, and Collier goes down for the second time. That's the fourth strikeout for Denny Nagel. Well, big names, rock and music, freaky acts, and their own brands of evil magic. Don't miss Penn and Teller, Sin City Spectacular, premiering August the 10th on FX. Have you ever see Penn and Teller? They're great. Comedians, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen them once or, once, once or yeah. twice. Once or twice. Shot hit by Cordova and handled by Galarraga for the out. I don't know if Galarraga was expecting a bullet right at him on the first pitch. Yeah, it looked like one of those pinball machines bouncing off the knees. It could have bounced about 10 more times, and I think he still would have picked him up and got Cordova out. And a teller, great magicians, and of course, uh, you know, one of them is the, the big guy, and the other guy is a quiet guy, and they do a terrific job, and they're very entertaining. Again, if you've got questions, on tonight's baseball game, you can email your baseball questions to this address on MCI Interactive Fame. Here on FX, our Saturday night game of the week. Tony Womack with a base hit to center field. His second hit in three trips, so a two-out single. And that is hit number five off of Denny Nagel. You know, coming into the ball game, Womack against left-handed pitchers was hitting only 216, but you got to throw that out right now because he's been very hot. He's two for three in this ball game, and over his last 18 ball games, is just under 500. And now, of course, when you have Womack on first base, you've got the chance with two outs to see some running right here. Pirates number one in the National League in stolen bases. They like to run. And this combination uh, clicked in the third inning as uh, Womack singled, advanced on a pass ball, and came around on the Jason Kendall's double. Throw the first base close there as Womack dives back. Tony Womack now has hit in 18 of his last 19 games, starting a new streak last night after his 16-game string of hitting safely ended Thursday. There's a ball backhanded and through Chipper Jones into left field. 
going to third is Womack, and the Pirates have runners at first and third, and all coming after two are out. That ball was hit pretty hard by Jason Kendall. That was a do-or-die play for Chipper Jones at third base. That's a base hit. They're going to give him a single. Back-to-back -back singles with two outs. That was a little Matador uh, act by uh, Chipper Jones at third base. He did not have time, obviously, to turn his body get in front of this ball. One hopper, and ball, by the time he gets down, and of course, with the play in front of him, easy first to third for Womack. Two outs, he's running on contact at first base. Mark Smith looks at a pitch down low, ball one. Smith has been called out and grounded out. So the Pirates with runners at first and third with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning, leading two to one. All coming after two are out. And Smith hits it in the air to shallow center field. And Andrew Jones making the catch for out number three. But we had a chance to see Tony Womack motor from first to third. No avail. The Pirates didn't score, but they still lead the Braves two to one. Go to the sixth inning here in Pittsburgh. Two to one the score. Last night in the three nothing win, Andres Colorado, who's leading off here in the sixth inning, hitting his 33rd home run of the year. And that is the uh, lineup of the home run leaders in the National League. Galarraga stepping in 0 for 2 tonight has hit the ball on the ground twice. Last time up a comebacker back to Francisco Cordova. Galarraga hit 41 home runs last year 47 the year before at Colorado where the ball really flies out of the park. There's a call strike to Andres. Mentioned how Galarraga can hit the long ball in all parks not only at uh, Coors Field and he is always like Three River Stadium. 21 home runs here in this park and that's the fourth all time by Pirate opponents home runs hit at Three River Stadium. Yeah he's like hitting in this ballpark. And this, for some reason there's always one or two ballparks that certain players just like they feel more comfortable they see the pitches better. You know there's a lot of different reasons he likes it here. One ball and two strikes to Galarraga who'll be followed by Ryan Klesko and Javi Lopez the heart of the Braves order. Four, five, six hitters here. Chases that pitch and strikes out. That is the fourth strikeout by Cordova, who has been effective against the tough Brave hitters tonight. Take a look at where the catcher is and how far outside that pitch is, and he is just waving at it. Kendall wanted to pitch early in the count. He gave him an inside location. Cordova went, no, I want to go outside. Cordova made a good pitch. Ryan Klesko takes strike one. Francisco Cordova trying to give the Pirates only their second victory over the Braves this year and trying to win his third game in a row. One ball and one strike. Native of Veracruz, Mexico. With one out. Klesko with a base hit to right field. Ryan Klesko. And that is hit number five for the Brave. It comes with one out here in the sixth. Javi Lopez. One for two, but hit the ball sharply his last time up. And Luke Collier made a terrific play going to his left. To Rob Lopez of a base hit. Throw to first base. Let's go is back. He is the tying run at first. With one out here in the sixth inning. 
amazing what good pitching will do, even against uh, the top hitting club. Good pitching will give you one thing, a chance to win every game. And usually when you have good starting pitching, you're not going to have long losing streaks because any time you send a quality pitcher on the mound, he can shut the other team down even if your club is not hitting. And that's one thing Atlanta has. They have five outstanding they starters. Do. And they always work around that pitching staff. They get the pitching staff, they plug in the gaps around it. The one uh, puzzle they may have is the fact that the they're a little shaky in the closer role as Cordoba now with his 81st pitch. And the uh, first base umpire Wally Bell ruled that Lopez went around in the count no balls and two strikes. So 81 pitches here in the sixth inning. He was at 50 in the third. So he has made quite a few pitches, or I take that back, very few pitches since then. And of course, that's the kind of pitcher he is. He's, you know, he's got an ERA of three. He doesn't walk many. When he's around the play, he's going to get outs. 0-2 pitch and it's one ball and two strikes. In fact, the only base runner since the third inning. The walk to Tucker with two out in the fourth. Nagel's walk. Gian with a base hit erased on a double play in what was a big defensive inning for the Pirates. In fact, the fourth and the fifth innings were outstanding defensive innings for the Pirates in the field. And now Klesko with the one-out single here in the sixth. Let's see where he comes on this pitch. Does he go outside with that breaking ball like he got Galarraga on? There goes the catcher. There's the sidearm pitch, but no off. We said Cordoba has had uh, some success against the Braves. Career-wise, 1-3 with a 1.04 earn run average in nine games. 0-1 this year. But he has more than held his own tonight against the... Uh, an impressive Atlanta lineup. Two balls, two strikes to Lopez. Top to the left side. Gloved nicely by Osik. Over to second. For the first. Double play. Another impressive double play. Pulled off by the Pirate infield. And that time it was Keith Osik. Who started it off. A 5-4-3 double play. The second in as many innings. For the Pirates. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Pittsburgh still has that 2-1 to -one lead. Welcome back to FX Baseball Saturday night at the famed Pittsburgh Incline that goes up to Mount Washington as the Pittsburgh Pirates. And of course, they're all talking about the new stadium, groundbreaking. Uh, I believe it's going to be in April. Yeah, yeah. they're going to knock down some buildings, and they're thinking 2001, 38,000 seats with the big city in the background overlooking the river. Going to be outstanding. You, you hit on something, 38,000 seats, and yeah. I think that yeah. is going to actually increase attendance. I think it will because this is a mausoleum. Not a lot of good seats in this ballpark. And I think if you get a more intimate ballpark and it's going to be pretty, well, I think the fans are going to come out in record numbers. Kevin Young on the first pitch. It's it high, deep to right field, and it's gone off the wall. Michael Tucker trying to chase it, and it is, let's see, Young is on at second. And now, they, let's see now. Gene Lamont is coming out. It looked like it might have been out of here. And let's see what it glanced off of. Young is holding at second base. And at this point, I think it's a double. And it now... The second base umpire in this play has got to go out there and take a look at I, this. I thought it might have gone out of here, Ken. I kind of called it as a home run. And I think the, the man who hit the ball, Kevin Young, thought it was a home run. Now, right fielder Tucker is going to make a great play on this. Oh, oh, it's a home run for that. sure. That one glanced off the wall. This was clearly a home run, and it looked like that. Jerry Davis is the second base umpire. We'll get a better look here. Yeah, it, it bounced off that beer sign, actually. Right there, the ball's going off the wall. The big wall out here. Ball's off the wall. That's a home run. Boy, oh 
boy, I tell you what, in a tight ball game with two pitchers on the mound, I mean, there's nothing that you can do if you're the umpire. He didn't think it was a home run. Here to Gene Lamont here. did, but there's nothing that's going to happen here except the ground rule double, really. Well, well, it must be an off-the-wall double. I mean, you can't even call it a ground rule double. So uh, Kevin Young uh, gets robbed of a home run and is on at second base. Leading off here in the sixth inning. No mistaking this ball is out of the park. Nice effort here by Tucker. It glanced off of the facade below the beer, the white beer sign. Look at the facade. It's the black underneath the white beer sign, and that is what it glanced off and went back onto the field. And it appeared to be a home run, but no home run signal was given. So young is at second with nobody out. Pirates are still leading two to one, and Gene Lamont's please fall on deaf ears, and uh, the batter now, Jose Guillen. That's going to make some highlight films right there. Whoa. Guillen, uh, 0 for 2 tonight. In for the call, strike one and one. Seven hits for the Pirates. They have had hit safely in every inning except for the fourth the only inning that is Denny Nagel retired the Buccos in order young with 20 home runs and 70 runs batted in to lead the team foul back one and two now to Guillen the pirate right fielder Pirates lead the Braves two to one. Each team scoring in the second inning. Let's go with a home run for the Braves and Manny Martinez for the Pirates. And then the Pirates took their lead in the third inning on Kendall's drive uh, double driving in Tony Womack. Now Young at second base. Pirates trying to get at least an insurance run here in the sixth. He jammed him and fouled it, got a piece of it, and stays alive. Moments ago, they brought in some uh, fudge brownies, and now <laughs> yeah. they have disappeared, Ken. And I, no, I don't think you had time to consume them or hide well, them. It would take me about a gallon of milk to stuff down those brownies because I saw them earlier. They look awfully thick. You were giving them the evil eye. Here's the one, two. And again, uh, Guillen fighting off uh, Denny Nagel to stay alive. Guillen trying to get. Young over to third base if he can with uh, one out for Martinez. Of course, if it's one and two and you're a young hitter like he is, you got a veteran on the mound. Of course, the veteran's not going to give you an outside pitch that you can just tap over there. He's going to try to make you hit his pitch, either strike out or hit the ball to the left side. That's why he's come in on the fist the last few pitches. Setting up on the outside of the plate and uh, waste that pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Pirates coming in with a 48 and 55 record. Three games below uh, their mark of a year ago at this stage when they were 51 and 52. But that can be deceiving. This is a younger team. And uh, you'd have to say a lot more potential than they did not even a year ago. And Guillen chased the pitch on a straight change way out of the strike zone. Well, Monday on FX, there's a dog catcher with an unusual taste bug that's interested in having Mulder for dinner. Monday is <laughs> night number 21, 100 nights of the X-Files. Keep watching weeknights at 8 and 11 on FX. <laughs> Mulder for dinner. Sounds tasty to me. Four or five strikeouts now for Denny Nagel, and here is uh, Manny Martinez, who homered in the second inning. 1-0 oh the count. 1-2 for two tonight for Martinez, who now has four homers and 12 runs driven in. Remember the 1-2 pitch to Guillen, who just struck out. He threw in that same high fastball. Give him something to think about. The next pitch, off-speed pitch, down and away. Kenny Nagel's bread and butter. Pirates leading 2-1. to one. And an insurance run at second. And uh, time called as uh, Young opening up a big lead at second. Now we got action in the Atlanta bullpen. A couple of right-handers, Martinez and Springer. Martinez, of course, Dennis Martinez. 
43 years old, Russ Springer, just acquired from Arizona. In the air to shallow center field, Andrew Jones comes in to make the catch. They're out number two. So the Pirates on the verge of wasting that leadoff double, which, uh, as the replay showed conclusively many times, was clearly out of the park and glanced back onto the field. So the Pirates should be leading 3-1 to one right now. Instead, there are two outs, and uh, Kevin Young remaining at second base, and Keith Osick coming up. And I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I would be positive that after the game, the umpires are going to look at that, and they're going to say, whoops, we made a mistake. It's a judgment, bad judgment call. But, and it's a judgment call, and that's one of the things about baseball that just happens. You know, it's an honest mistake. Osick 0 for 2 tonight. Fastball outside. One thing about baseball, and it was evident in the Baltimore Yankees series, is that you will not see one umpire confer with another and uh, say, I got a better view of something. Well, you don't I, see it much. I think if that was definitely the case and one of the other, uh, other umpires saw that, they could overrule it because it was that obvious. But I don't think any of the other umpires saw it. That ball was out of the ballpark and back into the ballpark so fast that it was, you know, it took us. I thought the ball hit the top of the wall, to be honest with you, when it came back like that. And when you said home run, I, I said, I don't know. See, we disagreed just a little bit. Well, I thought it was a home run, but the way it came off the wall, I, you know, I thought, well, it had to be off the wall. But uh, there is that beer sign and the black underneath that sign, and that's where the ball glanced off. So it was at, out of the park. But uh, nothing the Pirates can do about that now. Osik fouls it off, and the count, one ball and two strikes. And that is 95 pitches in the ball game for Nagel. Nagel losing to the Cubs on Monday. Worked only four innings. Gave up nine runs. All earned. And walked six. And that was the unsettling uh, statistic for Denny Nagel against Chicago. Here goes the runner. The one-two pitch. And it hits him. Osik is hit by a pitch, and Martinez, or I should say Young, will go back to second base. And he got a great jump to third base. Man. He had about four good steps to third as Nega was getting ready to deliver the pitch to the plate. I don't think he took one for the team right there. He's been watching Kendall too long. You know, Kendall's been hit, what, 21 times this year, 31 times last year. He just turns his back, of course. Nagel doesn't throw hard enough where he's really going to hurt you unless you get you right in that good spot. Leo Mazzoni uh, coming to the mound to talk to Nagel, and uh, I think he knew as that pitch was coming in that that wasn't going to uh, hurt him. No. Pirates are leading the league in uh, getting hit by the pitch by a pretty good margin over the Houston Astros. Well, everybody else is pretty close. Pirates are running away and hiding. Of course, Jason Kendall, 21 of the 62. Lou Collier has struck out twice. We see Joe Jones, the first base coach, talking with Keith Osick. Runners at first and second, two away. Young with the leadoff double, as it was ruled by the umpires. And here is Collier. Collier has not had much success tonight against Nagel. Two to one, the Pirates lead. The first pitch, fastball, one and all the count. Nagel has struck out five and has not walked about it. That after six walks in his last start. Fouled at the plate, one and one. Now you're the number eight hitter in the Pirate lineup. Pirates have won six out of eight, losing the first game of the series to John Smoltz and the Braves three to nothing. There is the. Dennis Martinez and Russ Springer, pair of right-handers, as Ken pointed out a few moments ago. Leo Mazzoni has already made one trip to the mound. Swing and a miss on the straight chain. And uh, the count is one and two. Of course, what, what's the key to the straight change? The key, as yeah, always, saying, is the motion. you got to have the same motion for the fastball as you do for the changeup, and that's the most important thing. One ball and two strikes to uh, Luke Collier. Setting up outside the strike zone, fastball, and it's two and two. He was looking for Collier to chase one. He did the last time he was up, chased the pitch just about where Javi Lopez had his target.
Two on and two outs for the Pirates here in the bottom of the sixth inning, leading two to one. In a pitcher's duel with some outstanding defensive plays. Runners are off, and Collier strikes out on the pitch in the dirt, and that'll do it. So six strikeouts for Denny Nagel, and the Pirates lead two. But Denny Nagel had to have some anxious moments as he watched that drive by Young that appeared to be out of the park, ruled a double, but the Pirates come up empty. And welcome back to Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Gene Lamont calmly sitting in the dugout, uh, having a home run ruled a double, but that's uh, old news now as the Pirates take their 2-1 to -one lead into the seventh inning against the Atlanta Braves. Francisco Cordova facing the bottom third of the Atlanta order. Michael Tucker leading off, and the first pitch is outside ball one. Tucker has been on base twice tonight with a base hit and a walk. Roll to shortstop. Lou Collier playing in perfect position, and Tucker retired for the first time tonight, one away. Now let's take a look at our degree game summary. Solo home runs in the second inning by Klesko and Martinez. Cordova doing a terrific job against the Atlanta Braves, giving up only one earned run in six and a third inning. And uh, left on base story practically even thus far. Here's Andrew Jones takes ball one outside. Yeah, here's a guy that the Braves thought was going to be a good leadoff hitter for him. And one thing the Braves have had this year is a lot of leadoff hitters which a lot of people thought was going to be a negative for the club this year. Swing and a miss, one ball and one strike. Very impressed with Cordova and the way he has come out the Braves in so many different ways and the ability to locate his pitches. Well, he's got good control. It gives you a lot of different motions, and he's tough to pick up. You know, he's going to come at you from a lot of different ways. Changes speeds, moves the ball around. Ground ball, hit the shortstop, and Collier is there. And he guns it over. Pirates playing perfectly defensively tonight. Collier was playing towards second base when Tucker was up. And then when Andrew Jones was up, he moved deeper into the hole. And we're going to have a pinch hitter. Lockhart is going to come up to bat for Denny Nagel. So uh, a pinch hitter, and that'll be all for Nagel. Keith Lockhart, who did not play last night. Hitting 266 with six homers and 29 runs batted in. Fastball misses outside, ball one. Lockhart is four for nine as a pinch hitter, so he has been effective. And we still have one pitcher throwing for Atlanta. Looks like we might see Dennis Martinez here in the bottom of the seventh. Lockhart did not go around, says Terry Tata, so the count is uh, two balls and two strikes to the Braves pinch hitter. Dennis Martinez in the bullpen. And again, uh, Cordova misses outside, so he falls behind Lockhart. 3-0. Three, oh. three walks in the ball game given up already by Cordova. This would be number four, and here's another situation, Dick, right down Broadway. Fastball and that catches the edge. Three and one. Next pitch, same spot. <laughs> Denny Nagel working six innings, striking out six, did not walk about it. Lockhart pops it up. Kendall gives a look, but it's behind the dugout. Three balls and two strikes to Keith Lockhart, the Braves pinch hitter here in the top of the seventh inning with the Pittsburgh Pirates leading two to one. Francisco Cordova, who defeated the Mets and before that the Cubs trying to win his third consecutive start. And it slapped one hopper to second base. Tony Womack makes the play at a one, two, three inning. We'll have a new Braves pitcher when the Pirates come up in the home seventh. Welcome back to 
FX Baseball Saturday night and the view of Three Rivers Stadium here. Mount Washington and uh, Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh with a glorious view as we welcome you Dick Stockton and Ken Brad. I'll tell you the Pirates with all of the good pitching of Cordoba and the timely hitting the defensive work tonight has been exemplary no question they have played good defense and don't forget this should be a 3 1 ball game and we're going right. to keep track of that because anything can happen in this ball game with the Braves having the power that they do. The new pitcher Dennis Martinez Martinez 43 years old has pitched for a long time was down pitching in winter ball Guy Hansen, who works for the Atlanta Braves. Under John Sherholz, their general manager said, hey, come down and take a look at this guy. We should sign this guy. And they did. And here he is in the big leagues. Dennis Martin has been around a long time. This guy knows how to pitch. Denny Nagel worked six innings tonight, allowed two runs. Both were earned on seven hits. Struck out six, did not walk anyone, allowed one home run his 20th of the year and hit one batter. So Dennis Martinez still under the age of 50 so you know he can still throw it. You got to have a pretty good arm and take pretty good care of yourself to throw the ball at the major league level at 43 years old and Dennis Martinez has always done those things and he's been blessed with a good arm and I think to pitch at 43 you have got to be blessed and have that kind of an arm and he's taking advantage of it. He is tied with Juan Marichal for the all time wins as a Latin pitcher. And there you're looking at another set of numbers which are impressive to Dennis Martinez active career leaders in victories Martinez leading that great group of hurlers. And he'll be facing Francisco Cordova 0 for 2 tonight as uh, Gotten the ball in play both times, but facing uh, Dennis Martinez for the first time. And the first pitch, a fastball for a strike. Martinez making his uh, 31st appearance of the year. All but five of them have been in relief. He has won two and lost four and has worked 61 in the third inning. Slap to the right side. Gloved nicely by Galarraga. Martinez coming over. He had a reach for that throw by Galarraga and made a fine play. So there's one away here in the Pirates seven. Well this week on FX major movie Sunday Anthony Michael Hall Robert Downey Jr. and Uma Thurman find life's a lot different outside of high school. Watch Johnny be good tomorrow at eight seven central only on FX major movie Sunday. Conference of the mound now between Javi Lopez and uh, Dennis Martinez. One thing you might want to keep in mind Martinez if the Atlanta Braves won this game he would win game number 244 making him the all time Latin American pitcher going one ahead of Juan Marshall. Now we both remember Juan Marshall. Yes, oh, there's a man who could pitch. Oh he was outstanding. Tony Womack slaps it foul out of play. Juan Marichal of course was a bit overshadowed because he happened to pitch at the same time that Sandy Koufax was toiling for the Dodgers but Marichal who wore number 27 would come at you with that high kick oh, at a tremendous high leg kick and you know growing up in Southern California like I did all those games used to be on TV you know it was Willie McCovey it was Willie Mays it was Juan Marshall against the great Dodger teams boy they were great great ball games Dodger giant rivalry when they were in New York and Brooklyn Again, reappeared on the West Coast because of the Koufax, Drysdale, Marischal, Willie McCovey, Willie Mays, Orlando Cepeda, and all of the great Dodger teams with Maury Wills and the speed that the Dodgers brought there. That was a contrast of styles when the Giants had a lot of the power and the Dodgers had the pitching and speed. Pitching and defense, and of course they had Maury Wills leading off. He'd get on first base, and the Dodgers would win a lot of two-to-one ball games because they had the great pitching. One ball and two strikes the count to Womack who is two for three. Single his last two times up and has scored the lead run tonight when he came around on Jason Kendall's double in the third inning. That pitch rides inside two and two. Let's take a closer look at Tony Womack at the plate. Not really a disciplined leadoff hitter. He does not 
take enough look at the pitches, does not walk a lot. But if he gets on base, look what happens. 60 stolen bases, including 32 in a row. And we talked about the new shortstop, the new second baseman coming up. Could he see himself in center field? It's just a thought. Count remains two balls and two strikes to Womack. Pirates have had the greatest success with the first two hitters. No surprise And Tony Womack and Jason Kendall. They are five for six so far tonight with two doubles, an RBI, and a run scored. So that is where the Pirates have done the damage against uh, Denny Nagel in the first six innings. But now it's Dennis Martinez with one out in the seventh. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Womack. And he serves this into center field for a base hit. Just got his bat on the ball. And good enough for a base hit. That's his third straight hit after being retired in the first inning. So he's three for four. Now here's a situation where you've got a veteran pitcher on the mound. You've got speed on first base, and it's late in the ball game. I'm looking for something to happen right here. Hit and run or a steal. Pirates are good in both departments. You've got Kendall up at the plate, who is tough to strike out. He's three for three. Let's make something happen right here. Womack getting his third three-hit effort of the week. Look at the concentration as he just got his bat up, just let the bat drop on the ball and uh, got the base hit. So three times this week, Tony Womack has collected three hits in a game. Jason Kendall has done it tonight with a pair of doubles and a single. And an RBI is 46th of the year. So I think you're right. With a 2-1 lead, this is the best opportunity the Pirates have for getting an insurance run. Fastball, and it's 1-0. I think if they had gotten that home run, making this a three to one ball game would even been a better opportunity. But the Pirates in the ball game have eight hits, six of the eight from Womack and Kendall. Throw to first base. Womack uh, opened up a good lead at first. Womack with 39 stolen bases in 44 tries, leading the lead. Pitch out and nothing was going. So Atlanta thinks something's going on. They're going to take a chance right there. Turner Ward is swinging a bat on the on deck circle. So Ward would bat for Mark Smith. Left handed batter against uh, the right handed pitcher. Flashing the sign in the dugout. Bobby Cox, 2 0. Oh. Not likely to pitch out this time. The throw to first base. Tell you one thing tonight, uh, Ken. It appears that the Pirates have won all of the guessing games going on. <laughs> now they between the two. Activity in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Left-hander Jason Christensen throwing. Kendall with three hits tonight. Not afraid to get hit by the ball. 21 times. A team leader along with Kevin Young. Tough to strike out. He's the kind of a guy that is not afraid to get down and get dirty in this game. Here goes Womack. The pitch taken for a strike and the throw well backed up by Graffinino. Tony Graffinino alertly backing up at second base. Otherwise that throw would have sailed in the center field. But Womack has his 40th stolen base of the season. And the Pirates with an insurance run in scoring position. Take a look at his hands and keep moving the fingers like that. Keep the hands loose. Keep the arms loose. Pitch was a strike, so the count is two balls and a strike to Kendall. One out, the Pirates leading two to one. Kendall with the open stance and lifts a fly ball to center field. Womack getting set to tag, and he's not going to go as Andrew Jones guns it back to the infield. And that'll be the second out, and Kendall retired for the first time tonight. For the Pirates, last couple innings, they had a leadoff double in the sixth inning, could not score him. Leadoff base hit and a stolen base here in the seventh inning. The Pirates desperately could use a run in this ballgame. Turner Ward is going to bat for Mark Smith. Ward, the pinch hitter, with two outs and a runner at second. How about this catch by Turner Ward here off the bat of Mike Piazza? Right here in this ballpark. Boom! Right through the wall. 
and it's the right shoulder. Look at that. The right shoulder. Now watch his shoulder. He hits the wall with his left shoulder. But he falls down, hurts the right shoulder. He doesn't mind crashing in the fences, a la Pete Reeser, who was a Dodger a long time ago in the early 40s. Fouled out of play by Ward. Ward is one for four with three RBIs as a pinch hitter. A switch hitter batting 257 as a left-handed batter. He's been more productive from the right side. The count, no balls and a strike with two outs. Pirates leading two to one in what has been an extremely entertaining game tonight in Pittsburgh. Dennis Martinez in relief of Denny Nagel. Trying to pitch out of this. Sliced foul. Giving chase is Klesko. And the count still no balls and two strikes to Turner Ward. Turner Ward originally uh, selected by the Yankees went to the Indians that played in Toronto Bill Walkie, and the White Sox so the 33 year old outfielder well traveled in his career behind in the count to Dennis Martinez no balls and two strikes and a ground ball up the middle and off the floor with Bastanino in the center field and it's past Andrew Jones the run will score easily and we may see an inside the park home run Rounding third is Ward, and he's going to come in. And inside the park home run for Turner Ward. And the Pirates have now opened up a 4-1 to one lead. You talk about some poetic justice right there. The home run taken away, and they get a little break right here. That ball was about six inches from being caught, and it goes all the way to the wall, and the Pirates have just gotten even and taken a nice comfortable lead right here four to one off the glove of the second baseman center fielder charging and it just goes right by him and if it were not for the deflection it would have just been a base hit and one run in andrew jones may not have learned the lesson this week you know he would not run him very hard after that ball was he he did not hustle and you know that bobby cox might have seen that so an inside the park home run, and let's watch. <laughs> Look at him, he's out of gas. Turner Ward. He's thinking and big shit up the middle, and he's going 100%. And now he sees it by the center fielder, it's a foot race. And he knew he was going to come all the way around. Kevin Young, by the way, foul tips and misses, no balls and two strikes, but giving the crowd a thrill, pinch hitter Turner Ward getting his second pinch hit of the year and now with five runs batted in as a pinch hitter and the Pirates lead four to one there's a fly ball hit deep to right field by Young but Tucker is there to make the catch to retire the side but it was the speed of Tony Womack and the good luck of Turner Ward he got the break on the deflection while the Pirates needed a break to even things they're up four to one We go to the top of the eighth inning, and the Pirates not only got an insurance run, they've got two insurance runs, leading the four to one. And uh, Turner Ward going out to play left field, replacing Mark Smith. And Francisco Cordova has some breathing room here as he faces the top of the order from the Braves here in the top of the eighth. Ozzie Guillen, Tony Graffanino, and Chipper Jones running up to bunt. And taking ball one is Guillen, who tonight is one for three. Well, there's Andrew Jones. And, of course, we told you about how he was taken out of the game earlier this week for not hustling for a ball hit to the outfield. And uh, you wonder whether you would call this hustle. Ken Brett, your opinion on this uh, inside the park homer by Turner Ward. Well, let's let the viewers decide. The ball gets by him in center field. Is he going full speed? Here's a guy with good speed. Is that full speed? I say the answer is no. I say that's Cadillac. Guillen takes the call strike two and one and uh, pictures. You know say the thousand words. That's a home run truck. <laughs> yeah. By, by. <laughs> and 
And the count two balls and two strikes now. Osik aware of the Gian attempt to bunt, but the count now two balls and two strikes. We have seen some uh, terrific plays tonight defensively and otherwise. Gian with a swinging bunt. And the young will step on the bag to get Ozzy for the first out here in the eighth inning. One away and Tony Graffanino coming to the plate. Graffanino alertly backing up on the uh, stolen base by Womack to prevent him from going to third. But then on the base hit by Turner Ward, deflected it just enough for the ball to get by. Andrew Jones in center field. And Jones uh, loped after it. And Turner Ward came around for the two run inside the park. Pinch hit home run. And that's the big play of the game thus far. That and the home run that was missed, which I think we can forget about right, right now. Yeah. We can put that to bed. The <laughs> yeah, home run that wasn't. To bed. They got a little bonus <laughs> run as a result. 1 0, the count to Graffanino. 1 and 1 now off the foul ball. Well, it's been a rarity for the Pirates to score as many as four runs against the Atlanta Braves. They've been outscored coming into this game 37 to 12 in the seven previous games. They've got a third of that tonight. Rapinino's bouncing ball handled by Osik and there are two away. Well next week on Baseball Thursday Juan Gonzalez brings his awesome numbers into the Sky Dome to meet the Jays. Or Jim Tomey and the Tribe close in on a Central Division title as Junior takes aim at the game's most hallowed record. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Two out to Chipper Jones. And the Pirates uh, have been fortunate tonight that Chipper Jones coming up for the fourth time has come up with two outs each time. That's the best way to pitch to this guy. Be a little more aggressive here. He walked back in the third inning 0 for 2 officially. Fouls it off. One and one. Jason Kendall a busy night behind the plate. Coming back to action after his three game suspension and getting three hits. Now this one might have jarred him a bit. Right off the mask. You know that, that shakes up and you know it doesn't really hurt that much. It just shakes up a little bit. Two outs nobody on base. Off speed pitch and uh, Chipper Jones was ahead of that one. So the count now one ball and two strikes. Francisco Cordova looking for his ninth win of the year. Has won his last two starts against the Cubs and the New York Mets. Two and two. One complete ball game on the year for Cordova. Mike Williams in the Pirate bullpen. He has stopped throwing out there. Breaking pitch. Cordova wanted that one. Instead, the count runs full. I think that pitch right there had Chipper Jones everywhere but out. I mean, this pitch, I think, freezes Jones. Three balls and two strikes now to Chipper Jones with two away. Stays alive. Atlanta Braves comfortably in front in the Eastern Division of the National League. In fact, uh, they have uh, established their best record after 103 games right now with. 33 games over 500 with all the attention going to the Yankees and whether they can top the Indians 111 in 1954 you do even better than that with the Cubs earlier in the National League but Atlanta Braves are having a battery. You know I look at three teams in baseball right now that probably are not going to be happy unless they win the World Series. The Braves are one Cleveland is the other and I think George Steinbrenner with the way his club has played is the third. No question about it Jones walks. Two out walk to Jones will bring up uh, Galarraga, but I think you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, just the other day when uh, some of the Yankee people were talking about wins, he says, look, 
I don't care how many wins we have. We want to win the World Series. We want to win so two games in October. Breaking, right. I don't care about breaking any seasonal records. I, it, I think that's the way, certainly. You know, Atlanta's been on the doorstep for so long. Cleveland's been there for a couple years now. The Yankees haven't, but they're an outstanding team. The other teams, I think, happy to get in, go as far as they can. Three teams want to win it all. One is going to do it. The walk to Jones was the fourth base on balls issued by Cordova. Want to know the count to Galarraga, who's been retired three times tonight. Galarraga, who hit his 33rd home run last night in the Braves' 3 to nothing victory, has been quiet at the plate this evening. Two outs, a runner on. The pitch is down low. In fact, what's interesting about the Yankees situation, looking over at the American League for a moment, that is that they are commandingly in front of everyone, the Boston Red Sox, whoever wins in the West. But the one team that they're wary of are the Cleveland Indians because with Jared Wright, who has had success against them, they have to be a little bit wary about facing Cleveland wherever they face them in postseason. You know, it's funny. The last time I did a game for FX here, you know, we were doing a game against the Orioles, and, and, and Ray Miller, the manager of the Orioles, says, I heard that uh, uh, Cleveland's going after Randy Johnson because if Randy Johnson's pitching for Cleveland, I like their chances to beat the Yankees. You know who else is? The Yankees are going after <laughs> yeah. Randy Johnson. There's a base hit to center field by Galarraga. So a walk and a single with two out and Galarraga hitting safely for the first time tonight. And uh, coming out of the dugout is Gene Lamont. And he may make a move right here. That is hit number six for the Atlanta Braves. Runners at first and second and the tying run in Ryan Klesko who has already hit a home run coming to the plate. And Williams is going to get the call for the Pirates. So Cordova gets a hand. He pitched extremely well tonight for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And he leaves with the Bucks leading the Braves 4 to 1. We'll be right back. Francisco Cordova taken out of the game after pitching seven and two thirds innings. 4-1 to one the score, and here's how we got to this point. Ryan Klesko giving the Braves a 1-0 lead with a home run with nobody on in the second inning, his 15th of the year. Matching that was Manny Martinez with his fourth home run in the bottom of the second to make it 1-1. But then the Pirates took the lead in the third inning when Jason Kendall doubled home Tony Womack, who was on second base. Kendall with three hits tonight, and the Pirates leading 2-1. to one. And then the bizarre inside the park two-run pinch homer by Turner Ward in the seventh. The ball glancing off the glove of Tony Graffinino getting by Andrew Jones who just jogged after it and Turner Ward coming around with the inside the park homer. Jason Christensen, the new pitcher facing Ryan Plesko. Ball one. Two runners on, two out. Tying run at the plate. Plesko with a home run and a single in three trips. Christensen's got saves in his last two appearances. The Pirates have got a couple people in the bullpen they can go to save. The other left-hander out there that can do that, Rincon, Ricardo Rincon. One ball and one strike. Two and one, pitch low and away. Another bullpen pitcher who can save for the Pirates, who's done it in the past, Rich Loisel, who's on the DL right now. So they're going to like a bullpen right now by committee, but they've got a couple people out there they can go to to get those saves. Jason Christensen and uh, Rincon, two impressive left-handers, and if they're ever contenders looking for left-handed relief, there could be a deal before the deadline involving the Pirates. Big cut and a miss by Klesko, and the count is two and two, and he was looking to tie it up with one swing of the bat. Versus Christensen, 0 for 7, four Ks, Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Four to one, the Pirates leading. And Jason Christensen in relief of Cordova trying to get out of the jam here in the eighth inning. Yes. He's out of there. Fastball on the outside corner. And Klesko goes down. And Christensen comes in and retires the Braves. Take a look at the calls for third strike here. A lot of people might have thought that ball was high for the National League. But not for the plate umpire, Paul Nauert. And the Pirates keep their 4-1 lead as we go up to the bottom of the eighth inning. 
Baseball Saturday Night on FX is brought to you by MCI. One team, one company, one local to Global Connection. Let's take a look at this call third strike here on Klesko. The thing I want you to look at is the catcher. So let's roll this forward just a little bit here. And let's stop it. Look at how low the catcher is. Look how good a look the umpire gets at this pitch. The glove is about waist high and he is below the pitch. And that might have had something to do with that. Jason Kendall with three hits tonight. Doing a terrific job. The all-star, bona fide all-star for this ball club. Jose Guillen with a ground ball to third and uh, retired by Chipper Jones. One out here in the eighth inning. Now here is our MCI interactive fan question. And we'll direct it, of course, to uh, the expert. The expert. Let's find one. You're in. Why is the common strategy, Ken, not to make the first or third out at third base? This from Paul Kincaid from Gatorland, Gainesville, Florida. Well, the Gators play. Well, if you, if you get a leadoff double and there's nobody out, you can score with the ground ball to the right side and sacrifice fly. So why get thrown out at third base when you can get a run in by making the right kind of outs? And you don't make the last out at third base because you're not doing anybody good. Give the next year a chance to get you in. So the idea, play smart baseball. Think a little bit when you're out there. Sometimes it's good to stretch a double into a triple. Sometimes you should be happy to stay at second base. Manny Martinez, Martinez batting against Dennis Martinez flies out to uh, Andrew Jones, and they were two down here in the Pirate eighth inning. Denny Nagel worked six innings, allowed two runs, both earned, seven hits. Struck out six and did not walk anyone, and he stands to be the losing pitcher. It would be his second loss this week. Coming up in the ninth inning for the Atlanta Braves, it'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters, Javi Lopez, Michael Tucker, and Andrew Jones. It's like saying don't make the first out at the plate <laughs> because there's, you know, there's too many ways you can score from third base. Why make the first out at home? Hundreds of ways you can score from third errors, hit hit batters, sacrifice flies, and don't make the first at home, don't make the first or the first and the third at, at third bases. Lots of little rules of baseball that you just learn from ball. Having, ball. Yeah. It's a <laughs> lot of different ways. Keith Osick with a base hit to left center field. And Osick on his way to second. Here's Klesko's throw, not in time. And Osick with a two-out double. That is the fourth double of the game for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Well, the Pirates are a team that like to run the bases aggressively. Here's a guy that's a catcher playing third base because Ramirez is out because of his five-game suspension. And this is game number two of that suspension. Nobody to tell you what to do in a situation like this. You're not watching the third base coach. You're watching the ball in front of you. If you think you can make it to second base, go ahead and make it. There's two outs. You can score in a single now. You've got a three-run lead. Take advantage of the situation. Six of the ten Pirate hits have been of the extra base variety. Four doubles and two home runs. And here is Lou Collier, who has to be as relieved as anyone to see Denny Nagel no longer on the mound. He struck out three times against Nagel. Now going up against the veteran 43-year-old slants of Dennis Martinez. Four to one Pirates, bottom of the eighth inning. Osik is at second with two away. And the count, two balls, no strikes to Collier. Crowd tonight, 41,568. It is the largest non-opening night crowd here at Three Rivers Stadium this year. There's a call strike. Pirates uh, drew 43,268 opening night against these Atlanta Braves. But their largest uh, non-opening day crowd was 38,000 against Montreal. So they came out in droves tonight to see the Pirates, and they've seen them play an outstanding game. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Chopped up the middle. Guillen makes the play and the side is retired. So we go now to the ninth inning. But the Braves trailing the Pirates by three. And 
back here in Pittsburgh with the Pirates leading 4-1. to one. And let's take a look at the MCI play of the game. And it involved Turner Ward as a pinch hitter, the big play in the seventh inning camp. Turner Ward right here turns his game around. It was a one-run ball game at the time. Off the glove of Graffanino all the way to the wall. And you know, we talked about Andrew Jones not running after the ball. I think even if he runs after it like, you know, like he's a hound dog. I don't think he's going to get Jones, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, you know, you play the game hard all the time. It's nine innings, it's two and a half hours, you play hard. And that is our MCI play of the game. Javi Lopez facing Jason Christensen, taking ball one outside. Got a pinch hitter up there now, Gerald Williams. Take that back. Gerald Williams is on deck. Javi Lopez is up. And I'm saying to myself, I look at the scoreboard here, I say, Lopez, you're not hitting for Lopez. Not with Lopez doing as well as he's had his career best 71 runs batted in right now. But uh, befuddled against Jason Christensen with the count one ball and two strikes. You know, Christensen right now has done a good job for the Pirates. You know, they got three or four guys out there they can go to, you know. One of the things that the general manager of the Pirates said, Cam Boniface, that he he had a lot of calls from clubs looking to really improve their teams by taking some of the Pirate players. And he said, I'm not real interested right now unless I can get something that really is in my favor. He didn't get that kind of a deal. And we're not talking about Christensen right here. We're talking about a lot of the young Pirate players and even some of the veterans other teams would like to have to get them home from the stretch. And you've got to be very careful not to let any of those young players go that are going to be the heart of your team. The veterans, that's another story. Do you think, though, Ken, today, as opposed to when you play ball, that there is too much of giving up, maybe? Uh, and it, maybe that's the nature of free agency, where teams like the Orioles, well, we're not in, let's just get get rid of players. But Rafael Palmeiro, uh, Alomar, players that were rumored to be traded, are outstanding players. And, and even though they may not win this year, What's wrong with keeping them for next year and saying, okay, let's suck it up. We didn't make it this time. Well, I think one of the things that Peter Angelos is always going to do, because the fans in that town have been so loyal to the Orioles, he is always going to put a good team on the field. He may make some deals, but he'll just go out and sign free agents. And he'll spend the same $60, $70 million. But one of the things that has changed is you have more teams that do well and more teams that are suffering. And the teams that are suffering are going to trade their veteran players to get younger and try to get better like the Indians did, like the Tigers are trying to do, like the Pittsburgh Pirates are trying to do. The teams are not as evenly matched as they used to be. And that's one of the differences because of the, you know, the, the Orioles have $70 million in salary. Some teams are going with 12 and 15 million. So let's face it, it's a little discrepancy there. Spending the money doesn't always get the job done, as we see. Lopez fouls it off. Javi Lopez 0 for 3 tonight. Robbed of a base hit on a fine play by Lou Collier. We have seen... Some outstanding defensive plays by the Pittsburgh Pirates tonight. Collier especially is Kevin McClatchy, the youthful and exuberant owner of this Pittsburgh Pirates team. Three balls and two strikes to Lopez. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Christensen struck out Klesko on a call third strike to end the eighth and gets Lopez on a swinging strike to start. The ninth inning. You know, we had said Christensen, two saves, his last two appearances. He's trying to get a save here in this ball game. Fastball, outside corner, just goes right after him and throws it right by him. Gerald Williams, as you pointed out, uh, on the on-deck circle as a pinch hitter, will be coming up now for Michael Tucker with one out here in the top of the ninth inning. Williams hitting 289, makes a big cut and fouls it off the screen. Williams is four for 15 is a pinch hitter with a home run and seven runs batted in so he has been uh, very tough for opposing pitchers coming off the bench but the Pirates have a three run lead with one out and none on here in the Braves night curveball for a strike no balls and two strikes to Williams. Jason Christensen in relief of Francisco Cordova. It's seven and two thirds tonight. That pitch low and outside. And the count one and two. Well, the executive producers of FX Baseball Saturday Night are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. The coordinating producer is Larry Myers. Tonight's game was produced by Tom Hewitt, directed by Dave Hagan. 
The head of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. And a fine job done by our technical and production crew as Christensen gets Williams to chase. His third strikeout, he's faced three batters, and the Braves are down to their last out. Outside the strike zone. Two down, nobody on, and Andrew Jones. Christensen trying to nail it down here for Cordova. There's a call strike. Jones one for three and a single. Well, the Cubs beat the Mets three to two today. Trying to hold off the Mets in the wild card in the National League. The Phillies losing as well to the Florida Marlins 5-4. Colorado over the Cardinals 5-2. And the crowd on its feet. With the Pirates one strike away from a big victory over the Atlanta Braves before the second largest crowd of the season. Now, these are the kind of games you want to win if you're the home team. Get these folks back. This has been a good ball game. And the pitch is down low. Let's go and uh, Manny Martinez homering. 1-1 one, one after two and the Pirates took the lead in the third on Kendall's double and they haven't looked back since. Here's the one-two pitch. Strike three and the game is over. And Jason Christensen strikes out the side and strikes out all four batters he faces in relief of Francisco Cordova. And one of the big wins of the year for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think you'd agree, Ken, a 4-1 to triumph over the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, the Pirates have been playing well lately because they have been getting good pitching like the Atlanta Braves normally do every night. They're swinging the bats a little better. We saw them play good defense tonight. This is a good, solid win for the Pirates. And they did it in every way. They did it, as you look at Turner Ward, who had the big blow as a pinch hitter, a, uh, a freak inside the park home run that glanced off of Graffinino's glove, but they made the defensive plays. Cordova was outstanding as a starting pitcher. Christensen struck out four of the four men he faced. They got the long ball, the big hits, and they look like a team that is a lot more mature than their age would otherwise realize. You know, you go back and look at the Pirates last year. Last year, they were the classic case, the team that was underpaid and overplayed. And this year, they got off to a slow start. But this is a good baseball team. And this is the kind of a baseball team that you're going to see get better over the course of the season because they, they are young. They're going to get more confidence. They're going to bring up some young kids from the minor leagues. This is a team that's looking a couple years ahead. But they are certainly capable, as we've seen tonight, of playing some pretty solid baseball. And there is nothing like a young, hungry, aggressive, hustling team winning as the Pirates did tonight. Those are our totals. The Pirates beat the Atlanta Braves. They've won seven out of nine. And Ken and I will be back from Three Rivers Stadium in just a moment. Back here in Pittsburgh, the Pirates defeated the Atlanta Braves 4 to 1, 4, 10, and 0 for the Pirates, 1, 6, and 0 for the Braves. Cordova, the winner, 9 and 8 on the season. Did not get the complete game, but Christensen came in, got his fourth save, striking out all four batters he faced. And Denny Nagel, the loser, 10 and 9 on the year. So, Kenny, the Pirates got the better of their ex-mate, Denny Nagel, tonight in winning a big one. And, of course, when you're as under 500 as much as they are, a game like this may not be important as far as a race, but it is as far as a future. I think the Pirates are a team that is trying desperately to get back to 500. I don't think they have much of a chance to be the wild card. I don't think they have any chance to win their division, but this is a team that's playing every game as it's a very important ball game, as it should be, and they are trying to build for the future. This was an outstanding ball game. We saw them do all the little things you have to do to win in this ball game: pitching, defense, power. How about that aggressive base running? I liked what I saw tonight. And before we take a look at some of the highlights of the game, there was an instance, and I remember in the fifth inning when Guillen was at first base and Graffinino was at the plate, and there was a chance for the Braves, who at the time were down two to one. And it was a move in which the Pirates were rotating, looking for the sacrifice. But on one play, they did not, and it really worked out for them. The funny thing about first and second situations in a bunt situation is they change the play just about every time. And sometimes the, set, the shortstop is going to run toward third while the third baseman comes home and try to get the runner at third. This time, they stayed put. They got a little break. They got a double play took him out of the inning and that's one of the little things about baseball if the shortstop is going to third we might still be in that inning you can't have those infielders moving let's take a look at the
the highlights of tonight's game, going back to the second inning, Ryan Klesko, with his 15th home run of the year, gave the Braves a 1-0 lead. Klesko, of course, is the kind of a player that's got a lot of pop. Here's Manny Martinez. Martinez gets a good pitch to hit off of Nagel, takes it deep into the left center field seats. That makes it 1-1. And with one out and uh, Womack on his second, Jason Kendall, with his second straight double, gave the Pirates the lead, and this turned out to be the winning run of the game. Well, at the time, it was the winning run, but of course, Atlanta, the way they can score, can do a lot of things right. But here's the big play in the ball game. The ball off of Graffinino into center field. This is going to be a home run no matter what. We talked about Jones not running after the ball, which he didn't. But this is the difference. And even though they did win 4-1, to one, the way Christensen pitched in this ball game, striking out all four hitters, really didn't matter in the end. And Jason Christensen struck out Klesko to end the eighth and then struck out the side in the ninth inning, getting Andrew Jones a 1-2-3 inning and four strikeouts for Christensen. And if you want to talk about a, a perfect kind of a game for the Pirates to win against the best team in the National League, tonight was it. How about 41,000 people? Second biggest crowd of the year. I mean, these are the kind of games that you read about in the paper the next day and people say, well, geez, I wish I'd have watched that one. Let's go out and watch this team play because they're playing good ball. There was, there was one interesting note that we were talking about at the time when Kevin Young hit what appeared to be a home run <laughs> that would have given the Pirates a 3-1 to one lead. It was ruled a double and the replay showed that the ball clearly had ricocheted off of the scoreboard outside the ballpark. We were talking about it because at the time it loomed large. Young had to settle for a double, never scored, but Turner Ward's inside the park home run took care of that. We called it poetic justice. Just the case right there. Not only did they get the home run, it was an inside the park home run, always more enjoyable. They get an extra run to boot. It was a good game. All right, so the Pirates win it 4-1, to one, and we'll be back with more from Three River Stadium, where the fans in Pittsburgh are delighted with how tonight's game went. Back at Three River Stadium, where 41,000 fans saw the Pirates win the largest crowd here at the ballpark, soon to be replaced by a brand new one, groundbreaking on August, uh, on April the 1st, since the opening game of the season against the Atlanta Braves. Let's take a look at scores around the league and talk a little bit about them. The Cubs beating the Mets. Mets trying to chase the Cubs. How many doubleheaders can the Mets win in one week? But they lost today 3-2. They, to they two. can't win those single games. The Mets got to double up more often. They got a lot of players. They got to win those single games. And how about the spirit of the Philadelphia Phillies? Hey, I, I think the Phillies have come a long ways. Probably as good a comeback team. You know, don't forget the second half of last year, they played really well. They got off to a slow start this year. They are right in the thick of the playoff. But tonight, uh, losing to the Marlins 5-4, uh, to four, the Padres and the Astros. Uh, two division leaders battling tonight, and the uh, Padres winning 6-5 with Greg Vaughn hitting his 37. I think both of these teams are going to the playoffs. I think the Astros will beat the Cubs. I think the Padres are pretty much a lock. I don't think the Padres are the kind of a team that's looking for the World Series. They're happy to be there. We talked about the three teams that are only going to be happy if they win it all. The Reds beating the Giants 9-8. Giants, what do you think of, of their deals that they have flurry of trades made by the Giants? including getting the veteran Joe Carter this week. Well, their GM, Brian Sabian, is not afraid to pull the trigger. They've got four new players, and I think Joe Carter is going to help that club. And I think the, 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 the closer they got from the Cleveland Indians, Mesa, is going to do a good job and a setup for the, the San Francisco closer. And I think San Francisco's got a chance. They're right in the thick of it. And the Rockies beat the Cardinals 5-2, which uh, brings me to uh, your opinion about what everyone's been talking about, and that is the, the home run race. Um, how much do you think that Mark McGuire is affected by the fact that uh, the Cardinals don't have a lot of people supporting him in the lineup, and the fact that the Cardinals really are not going anywhere, would that affect his bid, although he's got 43 already? Well, he's got 43. I think the big thing for McGuire is going to be the pressure, because as the season progresses, and I played with my brother George. My brother George had 390 one year, and he was over 400 the month of September. He was hounded day and night wherever he went. He checked into the hotel under an alias. McGuire is going to find this happening. McGuire is going to be hounded day and night. And how he handles the pressure is going to have a lot to do I with it. I think Mark McGuire has the right attitude. He knows, of course, that it's going to be a circus the first time he is in a city with the media. He knows that batting practice is going to be a circus all the time. Uh, I think he is steady that way. So I think his head is on straight. Even though he complained about it earlier in the year, he did for the right reasons. Because the one thing McGuire doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to make himself separate from his teammates. He respects how his teammates feel. You know, McGuire's that kind of a player. He cares more about the team than he does about himself. He doesn't care about the home runs. If Mark McGuire could win this thing, he did 20 home runs. Trust me. All right, let's take a look in uh, at the American League scores tonight. The uh, Expos, then we have two more scores in the National League. The uh, 
Expos and the Brewers tied 3-3 in the sixth inning. And, of course, underway, not yet, the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Now the American League. Indians win. As you mentioned, one of the three teams that say we need to win the World Series to make it successful. Mariners over the Orioles 4-2. The Yankees lose to the White Sox 6-2. Well, I, you know, I think Baltimore has come a long ways to get back into this playoff race. They have a long ways to go. The key to Baltimore, I think, is their pitching going to come back. Is Jimmy Key, Scott Kamenicki going to come back and get healthy? If they do, they got a shot. It's a long haul. And, of course, the Boston Red Sox uh, losing last night to Toronto. Uh, uh, Mr. Canseco coming back and doing some damage. But the final score here from Three River Stadium, 4-1 to one, the Pirates win. That's it from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. And this week on Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net, you'll see the Texas Rangers visit the Toronto Blue Jays or the Cleveland Indians take on the Seattle Mariners. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. Next week on FX Baseball Saturday night, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the New York Mets at 7 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on FX. Coming up next on FX on the West Coast, Fall Guy followed by the A-Team on the East Coast. That is the lineup all on FX. So for Ken Brett, I'm Dick Stockton. Once again, the final score, the Pittsburgh Pirates 4, Atlanta Braves 1. You've been watching FX Baseball Saturday night.